Good morning once again, and welcome to St. Cletus Parish on this Tuesday of the ninth week in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all the works of, that are good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Our first reading this morning comes from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, wait for and hasten the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace, and consider the patience of our Lord as salvation. Therefore, beloved, since you are forewarned, be on your guard not to be led into the error of the undisciplined and to fall from your own stability, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Our responsorial psalm today, in every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were begotten and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust, saying, return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Seventy is the sum of your, our years, or eighty if we are strong, and most of them are fruitless toil, for they pass quickly and we drift away. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by their children. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to ensnare him in his speech. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that what you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. You do not regard a person's status, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? Knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me a denarius to look at. They brought one to him, and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They replied to him, Caesar's. So Jesus said to them, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but to God what belongs to God. They were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. 
My dear brothers and sisters, as we re-enter ordinary time, we continue uh, with the difficulties of the virus and the difficulties in our country these past few days. Indeed, we need to turn back to the Lord and turn back to scriptures as we hear very clearly from the second letter of St. Peter, reminding us that we must be focused on the Lord always. We must not be distracted. We must be instruments of God's peace in our world. I don't think we have a, a better example of, of where there is a need for peace as we have all experienced in the last several days. With all the suffering and, and uh, troubles in our world, let us turn once again back to the Lord. Let us listen to him speak to us in the words of scripture. He is very clear of how he defines our role as faithful disciples. Persevering, patience, people seeking justice and peace. Let us resolve to do that this day and always. We hear in Mark's gospel as the Pharisees and Herodians are trying to trick him and trap him in any way they can. And they present to him uh, the question about where does their loyalty belong? To Caesar? Should they pay the tax or not pay the tax? And Jesus asked to see one of the Roman coins and asked, what is the image on it? And when they say it is Caesar's, he cleverly says to them, then pay back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but to God what belongs to God. And what is it that belongs to God? We belong to God, the sons and daughters of the living God, made in his own image and likeness. May we persevere in the work of the Lord and be instruments of his justice, of his peace, of his tranquility in a world that is in desperate need of just that. Knowing that we do not do it alone, that God walks with us. He will never abandon us. He will never fail us. And as we struggle through these difficult days, these difficult times in our own lives, let us be reminded of how much God loves us and only wants for us what is best, to be good and faithful disciples, instruments of his love and peace in the world around us. May we recommit this very day in these difficult times to do just that with the help of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, our Lord made us for himself and knows our needs. In confidence, let us bring our petitions to him. For the church, may the Holy Spirit instill in our bishops and priests the gifts of wisdom and holiness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected and appointed officials, may God move them to enact policies that lead to the flourishing of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are uprooted from their homes, may God protect them and lead them to safety. Let us pray to the Lord. For our community of faith, may the Lord allow his word to grow in us through our worship and service together. Let us pray to the Lord. All of those in our community who are sick or suffering in any way, especially those that are uh, affected by the virus, that our healing power of our Christ be upon them and they be restored to full and complete health, let us pray to the Lord. All those in our community who are struggling with the sense of peace and justice in their world and our world, may we know that God seeks nothing but our well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. For our community of faith, may the Lord allow his word to grow in us through our worship and service together. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, may the Lord welcome them into his peace and rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, we are yours and we thank you for your gracious hearing of our prayers. Grant them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we accept you, Lord God. May this sacrifice be pleasing to you, Lord our God. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mystery we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we now sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Cletus and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our dear Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Governed by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Once again, before our final blessing, let us not forget our brothers and sisters who have not been practicing their faith on a regular basis during these difficult times, both uh, with the virus and with the difficulties in our country at this time, we ask our Blessed Mother to touch their hearts. This time more than ever, they need to return back to the regular practice of their faith. So we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Also, before our final blessing, we offer a word of congratulations for our 42 young men and women who graduate this evening from St. Cletus School. Uh, most unique graduation probably ever experienced here at the parish, the most unique eighth grade that was ever experienced here at the parish. May we uh, let God know through our prayers for them how much they are cared for and loved for, and we wish them nothing but success and the very best of health and strength as they move forward in their education. Let us pray. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless all presents, that they may know your love, may be strengthened by their faith in you. They may trust you always and turn to you in their need. Bless them this day and always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another.